I may mention to you all that in an effort to frame my Black History sermons, I laid out all four sermons side by side. Um, and I may have made reference, but I didn't tell you all, so I'll share that now. The, um, some of you all know that have ever clicked and pulled up the written manuscript sermons online that um, I've been posting manuscript sermons for a long time. Uh, probably since 2011, I've been posting manuscript sermons um, from time to time. Those that I wrote a full manuscript with details of my better sermons, I would think, online. Um, well, this month I posted all four Black History Month sermons early in the month. And I guess I said something the sermon committee didn't like. Um, understand now, some of my sermons have been viewed and noted some 10, 20, 15,000 times. Um, during the height of COVID last year, it was no incident for those sermons not to be rebroadcast. Um, seven, eight hundred times. But I, made it, I, I indicated that the Hebrews came from Africa, the continent of Africa, and that therefore our faith is an African faith. And the writers, and, and one in particular, didn't like that idea. Um, and took my sermons off the posting. Um, we're still in dialogue about that. But <laughs> um, I just find it interesting how in 2022, when the facts are so clear, when it's so prominent, there's no Middle East, um, that we can still allow hatred and bigotry um, to be involved with faith. So I do pray that folks stop hating on the good news and celebrate who God is. But what really caught me is the 11th and the 15th verses of this text. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come. So that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. In verse 15. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Let us pray. Dear God, do remind us of who we are and what you have been doing with us. Over the years that God, and even through the midst of this year, reviving us an understanding, God, yes. that we were created with purpose and plan. Yes. And then God, that our skin complexion, yes. the amount of melanin we have in us is no curse, but a part of your divine plan. So dear God, we do thank you for the legacy of black history heroes and sheroes. But God, we also thank you for the possibility of us growing to be heroes and sheroes ourselves. Yes. In the mighty master's name of Jesus of Christ, we do pray. Amen. 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 So using for a subject today, my black history and African context for an African faith. An African context for an African faith. The narrative of black people has been taught to us each and every place we go. And we, we hear time and time again about blackness and the history of blackness and who we are. But oftentimes I think there's a part of the history missing because what we have done is we got in a habit of starting Black History Month in civil rights. And even if we go beyond civil rights, we go to 
the time of the plantation and, and folk coming out of slavery and, and getting patterns and developing this. And, and we say, look how great we were that we developed things such as a light bulb and such as a compression rod. And, and, and look how, how, how magnificent we were that we helped to develop the, 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 the combustion engine for the automobile. And, and, and we start to celebrate who we are, but I, 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 I caution that. Because we are more than just makers. We were created. And in our creation, we were created as powerful and mighty. Yes, amen. And in being created powerful and mighty, God had a purpose for us. So yes, we may have made the filament for the light bulb, but we made it because God needed us to make it. Yes. We would may have discovered over 1,700 uses for the peanut. But that's because God needed us to develop it and make it. Yes, we may have grown up here in Lake City and, and, and been around young men and women and, 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 and everyone can testify to our brilliance. And yes, we may have been one of the better saxophone players and tennis players, but God had intention for us to go into outer space and, and to show that we could do everything. You see, that's yes. part of God's plan. Yes. Yes. I caution you, though. The struggle for being black ain't easy. And the struggle for being a dreamer is not simple. And the struggle for hearing visions from God it's not an ABC thing. Amen. It takes work. Joseph was born amongst his brothers, and his brethren decided that Joseph was a bit of a tattletale. I, I don't know if you all know this, but sometimes your own family has problems adjusting to the dreams that God has placed in you. Mm. And, 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 and Joseph may have been a little arrogant because some of us are sometimes arrogant. Hello, somebody. And some of us sometimes are boisterous in the way we say things. You know, I, I get that myself. I know some folks don't like me because they, they say I come off arrogant. Well, I'm sorry. But I, I tell y'all a little secret. Behind my arrogance is a, fi a fear of failure. So sometimes I puff myself up just so nobody else can let out the air. Amen. Joseph went. And he began to tell his brethren about all that God was going to do with him and all that God had shown him. And you all know the story. They got mad, they got angry, and they, they got rid of Joseph. Yeah. Dropped him in a ditch, hoped he'd have died in a ditch. But then somebody said, well, there's no economic advantage to dropping him in a ditch. Let's sell the boy. So they sold him into slavery. You all know what he went through as a slave, what he went through in trauma. If you don't know it, you need to read it. You need to be familiar with Joseph. Well, Joseph finds himself in Egypt. His brothers come to Egypt for help. They come for Egypt for help. They want to find a way to get something because they're out of nothing. They find themselves in a famine. A famine is just a fancy word for a pandemic. The, the ground won't grow what they need to grow. Folk are sick because they're not healthy. And they find themselves trapped in the midst of a pandemic. They find themselves in a famine land. And what do they do? But they call on Joseph for help. He doesn't even tell them who he is. He tells them, said, we'll help you. And as they leave, they, they put a cup in the bag. This is set up. You know, I had to explain to some young boys one time what a setup is really about. I'm gonna break up. You know, folk, folk will set you up sometimes. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. They'll ride in your car with you. Amen. But when the blue light come on, they'll point at you. Y'all right. don't hear me. Come on, break up. You know, everybody else will be in the fight, but when, when the law come, it's all your fault. Yes. I guess y'all know what I'm talking amen. about. Amen. You know, Three. folk will set you up. And sometimes folk will set you up because they're mad at you. Yeah. 
Sometimes folk will set you up because they're jealous of you. Sometimes folk will set you up just because of who your family is. The word says that Joseph was angry at his brothers. Why was he angry? You can tell he was angry because the first thing he asked him, how is my daddy? All right. How is my family? Yes, I'm over all of Egypt, but I still miss growing up with daddy and mama and being at the house with all of y'all. How? Where is my baby brother Benjamin? How are they? Joseph sets him up. They get arrested. Then he begins to reveal who he is and he gives them intention. Go back. Tell them, say, you come back here later, but bring your little brother with you. Amen. So they come back. Amen. Our scene opens up. Our scripture opens up Amen. with them in conversation. And Joseph says, I am the one you locked up. Amen. I am the one you cast out. Yeah. I am the one you didn't want to deal with. I'm the one that had a snotty nose. I'm the one that had kinky hair. I'm the one that came to class with a little smell and, and rusty clothes. I am. Come on, Pat. Read that word. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. Because none of you all have ever been the child and whose shoes were too small, Come on. Yeah. whose pants were too tight, yeah. who didn't have a Christmas present for the teacher. None of you all know that experience firsthand. You, you don't know what it means to, to get a pair of, of, of shoes for Christmas and find yourself in February and the shoes no longer fit. Hello? Amen. Take that word. So, I am your brother Joseph. Joseph had every right to be angry, to be frustrated, to be out of the way, to be, to be set on revenge, to get them back for what he had been through and how he had been through it. Can I connect Joseph with someone else from black history? You know, on someone we learned about on CDF. Um, anger, unresolved bitterness, hostility, mistrust, and revenge. Believe me, after 27 years in prison, Nelson Mandela should have had all of that. He should have been angry like Joseph. He should have been mad like Joseph. He should have been out of the way like Joseph. He should have been set on revenge like Joseph. Similar to Joseph in 45, Nelson Mandela should have been ready when he walked out of jail to get everybody. I remember the day when Nelson Mandela came out of jail, released from prison. TVs were there, and newspapers and everywhere, and non white South Africans were, were joyous and celebrating in the street. And I remember the report that white people from fear of how what Mandela would do when he came out of prison was stocking up food. Hello. They were preparing for the worst. And when Mandela came out of prison, his first public speech, very similar to Joseph in Genesis, he said, friends, comrades, Fellow South Africans, I greet you in the name of peace, democracy, and freedom for all. Yes. You see, in chapter 45 of Genesis, okay. Joseph is reaching for reconciliation. Joseph is reaching out for his brothers, just as Nelson Mandela reached out to his brothers and sisters, white and black, rich and poor sharing forgiveness. For Joseph, reconciliation was achieved through his sincere forgiveness of brotherly love. Yes. So a couple points. Number one, forgiveness is a vital part 
of the Christian experience. Do, do you hear me? Yeah. Forgiveness is a vital part of the Christian experience. Yeah. To truly be a Christian, you've got to learn to forgive. Yeah. To truly be a Christian, you've got to practice forgiveness. I, 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 know, I know we don't want to hear that because we get tired of folks saying forgive, but you got to practice forgiveness to truly be. To truly be a Christian, you got to learn that sometimes folk have treated you wrong, sometimes folk have walked over you, sometimes folk have forgotten about you, and I want you to know that that, that forgiveness is, is, is not no fairy tale. It takes work, it takes perseverance, it takes nights of crying, it takes nights of forgiveness, it takes nights of being wrapped up in the situation, but you as a Christian got to learn to forgive. <laughs> number two, number two, number two. I don't want you to fancy five this text. Joseph was sold into slavery. I don't want you to polish it up. His own family sold him into slavery. I don't want you to do what some scholars like to do and say, well, this was a different kind of slavery and it fell under the Levitical laws of only being limited to a certain time. No, they got rid of him. Yes. He was in bondage. Yes. He was a slave. Now, yes, he did progress through slavery and rise to the top because I want you to know something. When God got something in you, even slavery can't hold you back. Yes. <laughs> But he did not, but he was, and we need to talk about it as if it was slavery, because slavery still exists today. Still, we know today that folk are being sold for less than $200 into servitude. That's still happening today. That has not stopped. There are folk on the continent of Africa still being sold into slavery. They were round up during wars, these many horses of war, and they're still being sold. With all the government, with all the power, with all the might, we have with all the, the, the watching over, uh, oh, 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 over Ukraine right now, wondering when they're going to move troops or not, we still are not preventing black and brown folk on the continent of Africa from being sold into slavery for less than $200, my Lord! Don't polish that away! And please, can we connect slavery with that whole concept of human trafficking. Hello, United Methodist Women. You all have been studying now for almost four years this concept of human trafficking and sex trade. What are we doing about it? Are we looking for the Josephs to free them? Are we looking for the Mandelas to bring out? What are we doing about it? I got a call this week from a young girl over in, on, on, on 52 in one of those hotels, six kids in a room, and she's scared to go to any officials. Um, and, and, and she didn't call me. She called some of my old members. And for two months now, they've been taking care of her. Young kids in, in their, their, their 27s and 30 years old, they've been taking care of their sister and her five kids. And they didn't, she didn't even call them. They were delivering what do you call it? The Grub Hub? Yeah. DoorDash? And they got to the house and they saw all these meals into this little um, motel room. And they said, what y'all having a party or something? She said, no, it's just me and my children. Oh. Well, why don't you get some help? Because if I give them my name, mm. I'm afraid the people that, that had me will come back and get me again. That's 2021, 22. We can't forget about Joseph because we can't forget about that young lady. We can't forget about her because we can't forget about Nelson Mandela. We can't forget about them because on the front of your bulletin are children from the march, the, the bloody Sunday that marched to Selma Alabama, that marched in Selma across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, but they didn't make it across because the police turned Billy Club and war hosts and beat them senseless and they had to retreat. Come on, and then those folk are worried about us connecting Joseph with Africa. I wonder why. So, you can't forget 
that he was enslaved. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move. I know y'all don't want y'all don't want to stay on that one too long anyway. Joseph himself. Point number three, a little bit more complex. Joseph himself stands as a bridge between cultures. Black history teaches us that 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 that, 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 that the Egyptians and the Canaanites and the Babylonians and the Persians were all people we claim from scripture and all people located on the continent of Africa. And Joseph lived as an Egyptian with an Egyptian name. His Egyptian name was Zephaniah Pen. We can find that in the record. You don't have to go and say, was Joseph a real person? We can find in Egypt in the record an Israelite who became an Egyptian, who lived as an Egyptian, who became father to the Pharaoh. This is not some fantasy, some myth made up in scripture. It's in the record. He had an Egyptian wife, Asenath. They had three children. They were all half Egyptian. Joseph was in the story. You don't need to overlook that. His brothers, Judah and, and Simon, also married and had children with Egyptian women. Hello, somebody. His grandfather, Laban, and Rachel's father was also the great uncle and as the brother of his grandmother, Rebecca, was Arminian. Genesis tells us that he's and his great grandparents, Abram and Sarai, or Abraham and Sarah, were from Chaldea, which later became Babylon, and now we refer to it as Iraq. Do you all see where this is taking place? On the continent. Joseph's family history teaches us that our biblical story is directly connected with that. Africa and Egypt. Joseph lived right there. And guess what he did? When he made it good for himself, he brought home the family. I need to tell you all something. And I need to be quite clear for this. Part of what has allowed us to celebrate black history is we have always taken care of our family. I don't think you hear that, Mercy. I don't think you hear that. Part of who we are is people that take care of family. Yes. Mm. Y'all know why I like to preach? Because I like to see people get stuff. Yeah. And I said that just then, y'all tightened up. What, what, what did I do wrong? Did I mess up something? I know it's hard. Y'all don't hear me. Because family, they can, they can sell you into slavery sometimes. I know it's oh, hard. Oh, great job. Mm. Family don't act right sometimes. I know it's hard. Yeah. Great. Family look at you like you're supposed to help them sometimes. Any of anybody know somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> but part of who we are is our history of taking care of family. Yeah. We got to teach our young people that they are not islands on their own. And they have a responsibility, Reverend Hooker. You know, and I keep trying to, trying to figure out, well, how is mama going to take care of herself this way? And how is mama going to do that? And how is mama going to do this? And if I move here, if I go there, how is mama going to get along? Hello. Hello. Mm. Mama had you. God birthed you. Yeah. And that's part of your process. Yeah. So when you're thinking about everything else, you got to think about mama. As long as she breathes, that allows you to breathe better. Amen. Uh, hello? Amen. Hello? Yes. When I know I'm off script, we got no time. When I had a cousin, 
I was staying in Seneca. I felt like I was by myself sometimes. I'm pastoring up there. But when I had a cousin move to the area, the family didn't say, oh, um, you was living up there. Both of y'all living up there. They said, your cousin is coming to Clemson, so you need to check on him. It became my primary responsibility to make sure he was all right. Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? Now, we call ourselves church family. Come on, preach up. Am I right? The word says, come on, gather near me. We've had two years of hardship. But the word says, you still got five more coming. And in the next two years, you won't plow nor reap. But come on. Because I, Joseph, got something. And if I got something, you got something. Because we got something. And I think we got to reclaim that as a community. If I got something, then we got something. If I got something, then we got something. If I got a car, then we got a car. If I got a house, then we got a house. If I got a skill, then we got a skill. We got to come together. You're not going to do it on your own. Joseph had to realize he was family. And Joseph realized that. Mandela realized that in order to rebuild South Africa, they had to share. They had to work together. They had to have a period of reconciliation where folk told truth. They had trials. And they came to the trials and told the truth about what had been done to each other and through each other. And then they embraced and they moved forward. We have yet to have trial in this country to tell the truth. Hello? We have yet to be honest with integrity about what racism has meant to our children. Everybody walking around talking about all these poor people. But we made poverty prevalent amongst the African Americans, amongst the Hispanics, and amongst the Native Americans. We did that as a society. And it's time for us to be real with it. Amen. It's time for us to be honest with integrity with it. That's what scripture is calling us to do. See, 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 scriptural forgiveness is deeper than brushing off the shoulder and say, I'm sorry. Okay. Scriptural forgiveness inquires and demands truth. Yes. Hallelujah. And until we tell the truth, we're just spinning our wheels. Hello? Amen. Yesterday, our Connectional Ministries, you all know the Connectional Ministry. They're the council, church council for the South Carolina Annual Conference. They're ones that plan the program. Well, we had this whole episode about we need to deal with racism and talk about racism. Well, I've been preaching and talking about racism since they gave me a mic. Hello? But we need, but until we come to the table and start talking about the truth of Joseph, talking about how Joseph got to where he is, talking about how Joseph was oppressed, and talk about how the fact that Israel was oppressed because they had abandoned Joseph. Until, y'all missed it. Let me simplify it. Until we talk about how the United Methodist Church has abandoned some of these smaller black churches to die. Until we talk about how the annual conference has stockpiled millions of dollars into foundations that never work with the needs of the community. Until we talk about the fact that we often send half-gifted, half-equipped preachers to churches that are struggling. And yet we never support preachers that are good and moving forward until we have that conversation. Until we have the conversation of why we would take a high school graduate and place them in a pulpit in a black church, but we take a seminarian plus and place them in the same size pulpit in a white church. Come on, preacher. If we don't remember Joseph, and if we don't remember Benjamin. 
they will never be healed. You see, not only is Black History Month about an African faith, it's about a God who empowers African and Black people. Trust in the Lord. Yes. That's what we need to do. God is doing something. God has been doing something. God is delivering Joseph, and we must remember that. Remembering Joseph, last night, is telling his story. Remembering Joseph is trusting in God's ability to rapture us. Remembering Joseph is telling of the lessons of what Joseph went through of lessons of generosity and relationship with neighbors and strangers. Mm -hmm. yes. Lastly, remembering Joseph is a call to action to say, I am your brother. Amen. Come home to me. We'll make it right. Amen. Thanks be to God. and hollows, up and down the street and over the hills and mountains and through the valleys. And we are strong, proud, brave, and yours. My Lord, this morning we have come to celebrate you and affirm ourselves as images of all your glory and to say, yes, Lord, we are strong, proud, brave, and yours. In every way, we count it all joy. Amen. Let us look to God for our benediction. The promise has been given. We have been called to minister to ministries of service. God goes with us all that we do enabling and encouraging us as we serve others. Go in peace. Amen. Do remember your offertory prayer. I do apologize. It's almost small this morning. But remember your offertory prayer and remember your giving as we exit the sanctuary. Thank you and God bless you.